Hi, uh, in this video, uh, we're going to discuss the basic elementary signals. But just before we start explaining the basic elementary signals, just let's understand why do we need to know about signals and what does it mean basic elementary signals. To understand that, just let's look at uh, what we have here. You see there is a block here and the H uh, inside. That represents a system. So again, another question, what is the system? System, it's as you see, it's any process that exhibits cause and effect relation. You can call it system. Uh, so this box represents system. System could be electrical system, could be mechanical system, could be thermal system, can be any kind of system. It depends on the energy used with the system. And uh, any system has input signal, okay? So that's uh, this arrow here represent the input signal. And this arrow coming out of the system, we call it output signal. And sometimes we call the input signal excitation, the thing that excites the system to excite the system to operate. And then when it goes inside the system, process will be performed upon this signal or input signal, and then it will respond as output signal. Okay, just to give example. Like if you have, let's say you have electric motor, for example. That's electric motor, all right? And this electric motor uh, has, uh, winding and you put like DC source like a battery or something has voltage and this electric motor has shaft and there is fan connected to it so what happened uh, if you turn on the switch so the voltage will be applied to the winding of the motor Electric current will pass through the winding of the motor and what happened? The shaft of the mo motor will rotate. So you get the response, rotation of the output. What is the input signal here? Current signal. Electric current. What is the output? Motion, torque, speed. That's the output. That's the response. So that's, and what's the system here? Electric motor. That's simply. So to test any system, you got to uh, 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 use some signal to test the system. Give me an example. Let's say that you are inside um, your room and you want to turn on the light. So you go for the switch and let's say that you have a switch in your room and has two position on and off. So, uh, and you got a, a light bulb in the ceiling here. So when you off, turn it on, so what happened, there was no voltage there, and then hop, jump to certain voltage, let's say 12 voltage, for example, then start to see the light, the response, the light. So this signal that you don't have voltage applied to the lamp, and then suddenly you turn it on, so you have a signal, jump from zero volt to 12 voltage, that's a signal input. So to test our system, you got to apply input signal. So that's why today we are going to discuss the basic elementary signals. Basic elementary signals used to be applied to a system, to test the system, and to see how the system can respond to it. Great. So the elementary signals, they are the very basics, and you can have uh, other signals as a combination of these elementary signals. So that's important to know the basic elementary signal. The first one we are going to uh, uh, discuss it now, it's called unit step uh, signal. And by the way, in this video, I will be focused only on continuous time signal. Because as I explained last time, there are two types of signals. Continuous time signal 
and discrete time signal. Here I'm, I'm focusing on continuous time signal and next video I'm going to do the discrete time signal. For unit step signal, it, 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 if you look for the uh, signal, you'll find it's zero, zero, and then you come at certain time, let's call a t equal zero, and then it jump from zero to one. Of course, this axis, if you wanna uh, sketch the time axis, that will be the time axis, and that's the amplitude, the vertical axis, and it's called x of t, against t. So this function, we call it unit step signal. Why we call it step? It's very obvious because as you see, it's jump from zero up to one in zero time. And you can express this signal mathematically as x of t, that's the signal, and that's how you express the continuous time signal between two brackets, right, t time. It's either one, when it's one, when the time greater than or equal zero, jump to one. But before time equals zero, it's equal zero. So that's why you call it step, it jump from zero to one. And why you call it unit step? Because the value is one. Can you have another value? Yes, you can. You can have instead of one, you can have two, three, four, but it's not going to be unit step. If you have two, it will be like two step signal. It's, it's a, or step signal of amplitude equal two, but the unit means equal one. So that's the first one. It's very useful signal. You can exactly, that's very similar to this example. If you have a switch, and you turn it from off to on, so you jump from zero up to 12 volt. So that's you make a step of amplitude equal to 12 voltage. You see? So you can test the system. It can handle this change, quick change or not. Well, so let's go uh, to the second signal. Um, the second signal, uh, it's called unit ramp signal. And this unit ramp signal it's increasing with time. What does it mean increasing with time? Linear. So let's just have the x axis and y axis. So if you have, that's the time axis, and that's you have the amplitude, are going to represent x of t, and you are going to find this equal zero before time equals zero at t equals zero, start to increase linearly to infinity. So if time is equal one, amplitude is equal one. If time is equal two, amplitude is equal two, and so on. So you can represent, so this straight line, this straight line, you can say it's equal t, right? X of t is equal t in this region. X of t is equal t, but it's not equal t all the time. It starts from t equals zero. So how we express this mathematically? You will say x of t is equal one if t not one is equal t because when t equal one is equal one t equal two value is equal two. So x of t is equal t slope is equal one huh? when t is greater than or equal zero and zero if t less than zero. So we give it some uh, symbol. You will, you, you will see most of the textbook. We call the signal R of T as ramp. And the unit step, uh, you can call it here U of T. So when you see U of T, it means it's unit step. R of T, unit ramp signal, increase linearly, all right? And remember, it's just equal zero before zero. Great. So what other signal do we have? And we're still making a continuous. There is an important signal, it's called uh, unit impulse signal okay what look like you know it's like when you get a hammer and just quickly you very falsely very quickly you just hit some surface by huge power so how you represent that? That's the time axis, and that's the magnitude. 
x of t. So you can say uh, it's huge signal at t equals zero. What does it mean? The duration is equal to zero, almost zero. It's very very narrow, very narrow. Of course, there is nothing called zero. There is nothing called duration equal zero, but we are saying that is very small. So to make you understand, if you have a small rectangle like that, around t equal zero. So and the amplitude, let's say, is equal a. So the width of this pulse should be equal also a. 1 over a. So the area is equal 1. So the pulse is very narrow one, very small. In such a way, the area is equal 1. How you represent that? Well, ideally, I'm talking now ideally, we call it delta of t, which is unit impulse, is defined at that. At t equals 0, the amplitude is so big, you can say infinity. I'm talking about an ideal case. And except that, before t equals 0, and after t equals 0, it's equal 0. If t is not equal 0, there's nothing. So it just appear only at time equal 0. It's like as I said, you have in your hand a hammer, and just you hit it quickly on the surface with a huge bar. So ideally, the amplitude is equal to infinity, and the duration is equal to zero. But practically, it has width. Okay, so the definition is that the, the magnitude is huge at t equals zero, and uh, if t not equals zero, it's, it's not, there is nothing there. All right, so uh, if I give you an example, and I will see, let's say, I give you an example, how to represent it. Let's say that you have, that's, time and that's uh, the representation of the amplitude x of t so let's say that you have a rectangle if i tell you that this is equal to minus 0.1 second and this one at 0.1 second so i'm asking you now about the amplitude what is the amplitude so quickly will say that the area should be equal one why the area is equal one because i'm talking about unit impulse signal you will say okay that the width is equal 0.1 minus minus 0.1 so the width is equal 0.2 right so and you know that the area should be equal one and the area is equal width time length the width is equal 0.2 and the height is equal a and this should be equal 1. So what is the amplitude? a is equal 1 over 0.2 which is equal to 5. So we'll say it's equal to 5. Because to make area equal 1. So let's just add to the definition delta of t. It's huge when t equals 0 and 0. Otherwise, add to this and the area what do you mean the area well the area make integration for it from uh, uh minus infinity to infinity delta of t delta t if you make the integration in the area you see the area means integration will be equal one so that will be the definition of the unit impulse very important signal so the integration from negative infinity to infinity to this signal with respect to the time is equal one because the area it means integration but you see you are integrating from negative infinity to infinity okay because it's before this point is equal zero and after this point is equal zero so if you integrate from negative infinity to infinity you will just integrate where it exists which is equal one that's very important definition for that and we have many uh important characteristic for this unit impulse. Uh, let me just give you some of it. 
For example, if you multiply this uh, unit impulse and, and we are going to represent all the time like that. That's a unit impulse. And that's the way you're going to represent it graphically. The continuous version. If you multiply this delta t by any function or any signal like something like that. Uh, let's say that this is like, um, uh, give it anything like uh, v of t, for example. That's an, a function. All right. And you want to multiply it by impulse. Delta of t. Of course, this happened at t equals 0. So, it will just get the value of this function. What is the value of this function? All right. Well, at delta of t, at t equals 0, you will get the value of this function, v at t equals 0. So, the answer is, when you multiply impulse function by any function, say v t, it will give you the value of this function at t equals 0, multiply it by delta t. Well, we don't understand. All right. Let's just say, uh, let's say that you have uh, a straight line. All right. V of t. Let's say it's equal to 4 plus 5t. All right. 4 plus 5t. That would be a straight line. How is sketch it? At t equals 0 is equal 4. And 5t, t t is equal 1, will be 9. So at t equal 1 is equal 9. So you got like two points. You connect it to be something like that. So that's your function, v of t. What about now if you multiply by impulse function, delta of t, unit impulse function, which is equal 1, this red one at t equals 0. So what you will get? Okay, let's solve it. You will say that this function 4 plus 5t, you multiply it by delta t, it will give you the value of this function at t equals 0. So what happens when you put t equals 0 in this function? 5 times 0 is equal 0, plus 4 is equal 4. So it will be equal 4, and you put delta t. So the answer is 4 delta t. That's the answer. All right. Maybe somebody will say, okay, why just you don't write 4? Oh, okay. Because if you write 4, how is sketch 4? If this is the, the time axis and this is the amplitude, this is how you sketch 4. But that's what you need to get. When you multiply delta of t by this straight line, you get only this point. So how you present this point? 4 delta t. What does it mean 4 delta t? It means you are going to have a pulse, but not unit. 4 delta t. It's impulse, not unit impulse. Impulse of amplitude equal 4. That's what you, uh, you are going to get. You are not going to get this one. This is wrong. This is right. Now you understand why you say 4 delta t. All right. Another important property for the unit impulse that you should understand. What about if you integrate v of t, that's function, delta of t, and then you integrate it from negative infinity to infinity, delta t. That's different than only when you multiply v of t by delta t. It's different, right? Okay. When you do the integration, you know the integration of v t by itself, delta t by itself, it gives you uh, one, but when you multiply by vt, so you're going to get v of zero. You get v of zero. It will give you the value. So let's just take example. If you integrate the same function with it, 4 plus 5t delta t, delta t, yes, you are going to get 4. Not 4 delta t, you will get 4, which goes express the area, which will be equal 4. So you know what's the difference between both. Great. That's very important property for the unit impulse. <laughs> Let's now have another one. You are going to see it a lot in, in this course. There is one uh, signal called unit. 
rectangular pulse. It's a simple one, but it's really important. Didn't write it right here. This unit. Well, uh, that's the the axis of time t, and that's the amplitude, and the vertical axis x of t. Uh, let's say that uh, that's equal to negative tau over two. And that's positive tau over 2. And the amplitude is equal 1. So, as you see, it looks like a rectangle. It starts from negative tau over 2 to positive tau over 2. Symmetric about the, the vertical axis. And the amplitude is equal 1 because we're talking about the unit rectangle pulse. Well, how we express this mathematically? Uh, x of t... We call it a rectangular pulse and define at t equals zero, that's the t. And the width of this pulse is equal to tau. But start from negative tau over two to positive tau over two. That's how you express it. It means it's equal to one if t if t less than tau over 2, it's equal 1 of t greater than negative tau over 2, 0 otherwise. You can express this mathematically by combining the first two lines, you say it's equal 1, if the absolute value of t less than tau over 2. Okay. Here, the t is less than tau over 2. That's, of course, the negative. But you take the absolute to be less than tau over 2 also. Zero otherwise. So, let's say, for example, if you have a rectangular pulse, And it starts from negative 5 to positive 5, and then it is equal 1. So how you express this signal? x of t will be equal to 1, right? Uh, if t less than 5, okay? You can say it will equal, it's okay. 0, otherwise. How you express this one? You see a rectangle, symmetric about the time t, and over tau, tau here, the whole width, this is tau over 2, my negative tau, then this is tau over 2, so tau is equal to 10. So that's how you write it. So that's how you write, that's how you express. What's called unit rectangular pulse. That's another important one. All right, let's move to another uh, pulse triangular okay and let's take it also in it uh, pulse uh, it's very similar to the rectangular except as you see from the name is a triangular pulse so look like a triangle and symmetric also the amplitude is equal 1 and this is negative tau over 2 positive tau over 2 and 0 behind these values so this signal x of t we call it rectangle like that all right and it's symmetric about t equal 0 and the width is equal tau so that's how we write it. How we express mathematically? All right. 
Uh, the same way, and I will leave this as exercise for you, if you follow the same step as we did in the rectangular pulse, you can say it's 1 minus 2 absolute value of tau divided by tau. That's when the absolute value of tau less than tau over 2, right, or equal, and 0 otherwise. Just to help you, I'm going to show you just one side. If you want to express this side, that's a straight line, right? So x will be equal to, that's the y-intercept 1. And the slope of this straight line is negative. What is the slope? The vertical over the horizon, right? Uh, rise over run. So that's 1, and that's tau over 2 multiply by the variable t. So if we look at it, 1 minus tau over 2, 2 will come in the top over tau t. That's when the time is positive. If you substitute here, you find 1 minus t, t over tau. 1 minus t, 2 over tau. The same thing. You can approve also the other side. You get the same exhibition. So what you call this one? triangular pulse and that's the way how you write it great let's now find another one uh, there is one called the sine function all right or signal and how you represent it that's the time axis vertical axis and from the name sine so when t is positive it will be one when t is negative it will be negative one simple how you express this one x of t you will say it's equal to sine function of time it's either positive one or negative one positive one when t greater than zero negative one when t less than zero that's the sine function very simple okay let's take the last one uh, also another important one sinusoidal signal And I'm sure that you 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 saw this signal before. Uh, that's the, the axis of the time. And let's just sketch here the vertical axis. X of t. Uh, if you want to talk about the unit sinusoidal signal, I'm using equal one. That's how you sketch the sign. Um, oops. And also can go from the other side here. Let's just make it symmetric. So this one also go. So that's the sign and the amplitude one maximum negative one all right and that's time t well uh this is the t equals zero and uh, how you write the equation of the sine wave if the amplitude is equal one and then sine as you know omega t and as you know, omega, we call it the angular frequency. And it's measured by a radian per second. And there is a relationship between angular frequency and the hertz. Two 
why f what's f it's also the frequency then you say you are confusing us you are calling omega frequency and f frequency yes there is different this frequency f written f that's hertz what does it mean hertz well it means cycles per second what's omega the other frequency it's the angle of frequency radian per second okay what about the the period uh because it has a period here if you can measure from zero that's t over two and that's t this is the period one complete cycle took t capital here you can write omega equal two pi f or two pi over t and this is the period how we do that because you know that f the frequency is equal one over t and i know we did that before so it's very really simple so now we can write the expression of the sine wave you can write it like one if the value is equal one sine and instead of writing omega you can say two pi over t t that's one way to express it so that was the last um, um signal of course there are many signals but these are like the elementary basic signal that we are going to use a lot and that all continuous so next time we are going to do 